a place that exists in real life and fantasy. The place where coworkers put their whole hand in your hair, talk about, it's fluffy like a dog. Now, I realize that sounds terrible, but it's like watching Dateline. You can't believe it was the girlfriend who killed the husband. It's the edge of reality. Technically, it happens, but it's barely plausible. Excited, I steal away to the elevator banks at work and listen to Lacey tell me a new horror story. It is fantastic. As I stand there, mouth agape, listening to some new fresh hell, I'm always struck by the fact that these stories will only exist in this phone call. Some will go on to become stories once the topic turns to racist people at work one night when Lacey's hanging out with all of her friends, but she'll forget most of them because of the sheer volume. The sheer volume. Now, I understand all of this sounds harsh, but you have to know that this is not a book full of sad stories. The previous paragraph will be the saddest it will get for a while. Black people hear stories like these so frequently that it takes a lot for it to start to hurt our feelings. We have all been through it, but dare I say, you ain't been through it like Lacey. Black listeners will hear these stories and feel that really good yet terrible feeling of going through something bad and realizing you're not alone. And not only that, but that someone else has it worse. And hopefully the white listener is going to listen to this, feel sad, think a little about it, feel like an ally, come to a greater understanding of the depth of this type of shit, and maybe walk away with a different point of view of what it's like to be a black American in the 21st century. Hence this book. Why? Why would a person do this? There are a few reasons why I think this book is important. I think it's important for people to speak on what has happened in their lives. When something shitty happens to you and you never say anything about it, it festers. And trying to act like it's not happening is bad for you. I know, Lacey. You guys, Lacey has the burden of carrying around all this garbage alone. I want to unburden her. I want to wrap my hair in kente cloth, stand on a rock, and shout, Let us unburden our sister Lacey by gathering to hear her stories, lest they drag her down to the pits of depression. But that would be insane. Slightly less insane? Gathering these stories into a book and selling it to strangers in malls and airports throughout the country. Also, any person who has to live like this needs to hear that there is a second person slogging through this mess. And then they'll realize that there's a lot of people living like this and feel better, then worse for a second, and then better again. We want to use this book to make sure people understand that when something racist happens to you, you can say it. You can feel however it makes you feel, and you can talk to people about it. You have the right. It can hit you however it hits you at that exact moment. You can express your feelings about it or not, or just tell the story and leave your feelings out, or just say your feelings and leave the story out. It's your world. There are a billion studies about why you should speak positively, meditate, how to handle loss and stuff like that. But when it comes to how to live in a country made to abuse you, who the fuck knows? So do what you feel. And not to go full hippie on you, but leaving these things unsaid gives them power. Try to unroll your eyes and listen to the rest of this. If you do not take the time out and call bad things that have happened to you bad, they float around your brain categoryless and with influence from the type of people who want to penalize you for calling racist things racist. Those events can fall into the okay category. Shut up, Lacey. And finally, has anyone taken a look at a lifetime of racism? I mean, this isn't every racist story that has happened to her, and she's nowhere near the end of her lifetime, but it's a good chunk of them. Now, some of these stories are old, but a lot of them are post-Obama stories. A lot of folks think things like this don't happen anymore, but in this climate where people are becoming more and more brave with their racism, I think things may get worse before they get better. Just kidding. I don't think things are going to get better. Just kidding about just kidding. I'm team hopeful. But my point is, has anyone ever decided to take a look at one person's buttload of racist stories? What happens when you do? I don't know, but here you go. About the authors. Amber Ruffin was born in Omaha, Nebraska in 19-whatever-year-is-plausible-for-you, but still implies that she is young. She moved to Chicago to pursue a career in improv and laugh all you want, but it worked. She was hired by a theater called Boom Chicago in Amsterdam, where she did improv shows for what felt like a billion years. She also did shows in Chicago at the Second City main stage. And that's it. That's a complete list of full-time improv jobs you can have in this world. 
In 2014, 